The banks want to hold all your bitcoins. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family Channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, guys, massive news. Yes, massive news. Also, five amazing Bitcoin jars, a crypto tip, answering the question of one of the followers, and ending the video, of course, with an inspirational quote. Let's quickly jump into that massive news before we go into the charts to show you how that will affect the charts. Bam. The news for today, guys, is that Itaú Unibanco is the biggest bank of Brazil and Latin America with more than 60 million clients just opened cryptocurrency trading for all their clients. So yes, now the biggest bank of Latin America makes it possible for all their clients, if they have a bank account, to start buying Bitcoin and Ethereum with their bank account in their banking environment. And a lot of people think that this is very positive. Of course, I am always in between. Of course, I am positive because yes, this will lead to massive adoption in Latin America and will give access to Bitcoin to a lot of people that have a bank account, but, but that's of course not real Bitcoin. That's Bitcoin that are being held by your bank in custodial service. Just like your money that is at the bank isn't yours, the Bitcoins that are also at those banks is also not yours. Just read the small captions always in those banking statements. The money that is on your bank that you believe that is yours is kinda their money. You have lent that money to them. The same counts for your Bitcoin. If you buy Bitcoin in a banking app and you hold your Bitcoins at that bank, then that bank is your custodial service. They are the owner of those Bitcoins until you withdraw them. But if it's impossible to withdraw them from your bank to your wallet, then of course it's not real Bitcoin anymore. So let's see what that bank is going to do. Let's see if it will make it possible for people to buy Bitcoin with their bank, but also send Bitcoin to an external wallet, just like Revolut, for example, is doing. Also an online bank for 30 million clients. They allow small amounts of Bitcoin to leave your banking environment every month. Let's see if Itaú Unibanco in Brazil, Latin America, is going to do the same. Are they going to treat Bitcoin as Bitcoin or are they just after all your money and getting stuck into Bitcoin, into the banking system, with always having the possibility limiting your access to those Bitcoins. If you use a custodial service, you don't do self-custody, either if it's a bank or it's a crypto exchange, uh, they have the ability to freeze your Bitcoins. And that should, in my opinion, never be possible. But again, it is huge news for all those people that still believe the banks more than Bitcoin, that will now get access to Bitcoin through their bank account in Latin America, 60 million clients that will lead, of course, to a part of them buying Bitcoin. So that is buying pressure, which, of course, is always needed into the bull market. That is how retail gets involved in Bitcoin again, by simplifying their access to Bitcoin. And that's exactly what Itaú Unibanco is doing. They are simplifying access to Bitcoin for all the Latin American clients. And that leads to the second news article because it's very important that the retail start to step in. Why? If we now look at this chart, for example, over here, bam, that chart is showing us again a huge dip of minus 17% in change of demand for Bitcoins by retail. Minus 70%. The last time we saw a minus 18% change in demand for Bitcoin by retail, we flew up with 75% in the price. This was in January, when Bitcoin was still around 40K. Minus 18% led into a run all the way up to 73,000 US dollars. So it's very important that on this chart, we can see now that that first time in January, minus 18, now again, minus 17. Will that lead again to this massive run of Bitcoin of 75%? Is indeed this dip again the dip that you should be buying? That dip that you should have been adding Bitcoins to your portfolio? I believe it is. I believe you should be accumulating as much as possible Bitcoins below 70K because there will be a moment we won't come back below 70K for many months. These dips are for buying, not for crying. And believe me, if this chart is right and we will have a 75% run, that's a run to over 100,000 US dollar, guys. So yes, 
I trust the charts. So let's see what will happen. Stop crying, start buying this dip. Now let's jump into more charts to dig a little bit deeper into Bitcoin. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. Now on this four hour chart, I added these dotted lines here on the bottom. One dotted line is at the level of 30 and the other level 70. How do you add them? You just go here to the left, guys. There you can click on all these lines. You take a, like, for example, a horizontal line over there and you click somewhere in the chart and then you can see the line appearing. So I'll delete them same way, just clicking them, delete and gone. Now, what I want to show you on this four hour chart, every time when that blue line, the signal line goes down below this dotted line, that's the moment we are bouncing. And that moment is again there. Look, we were down below it, we are coming above it. This should be the bounce moment. If we look back now, completely to the left, for example, over there, we went down below it, we came above it. Look what happened to the Bitcoin price. That was that bounce moment. Here again, we came down below it, we went above it, bounce moment. Every time over there, came down below, we went above it, bounce moment. And bouncing means that we go up again, <laughs> so for, to be clear. But here again, buying, bam, bounce. Every time when Bitcoin does that, here, if we go back even further, here, down below it, bounce moment. And I know, yes, the chart is pretty full now with indicators, but every time when we go in this line, and there's the 30 line, and the line is of course for the RSI, if we come down below it and we go above it, that's the moment Bitcoin should be bouncing. So yes, I still expect a bounce back to those 70K levels and even a little bit higher, but I will show you later on another chart why I expect even a little bit higher. If we zoom out to the day channel, we can still see we did break out that head and shoulder pattern, head and verse. We did break out of the, out of that wedge. We did retest it, but we again tried to retest it. So is it still a valid breakout? Hmm, not really, but we didn't break back yet into this pattern, into this channel. So it could still be a like extended retest before we take off. The amazing thing to see on the daily chart, this is a daily chart guys, is that that yellow line over there that is the support at the moment, and that support is at the 100 day moving average. So these lines are always important during um, a, a bull market, the 100, and then we have the green line on this one, is the 50 day moving average, and then we have the red one, that's a 200 day moving average. And the blue line, guys, is the 21 day moving average. Yes, we broke the 21, mostly then we fall to the 50 or to the 100 to find support over there. And if not, in the worst case scenario, yes, the 200 will be the support. But let's see, I think that 100 is showing already a beautiful level of support at the moment. So beautiful, RSI is resetting. So we need to go down a little bit more, maybe with the RSI that we come down below the level of 30, so that we can pull up again for another bounce. MACD, yeah, was a little bit bullish, but bearish again. So it's all fine. It's all part of the bull market, but I will come back to that also later. Now, then of course I have um, the top and bear and bottom chart that I share with my VIP gamers. If you want to become a VIP, then go uh, to our website to become a VIP member, guys. Um, in this chart, you can see that at the moment we are here at a level just starting. We are just starting. We just had that first, you know, you, the bear market bottom, that first slow grinding upwards, a huge run. And now we are running into that midline. This is exactly the same period that we had like over here in 2017 that we ran up to that midline, that we ran here to that midline was a little bit early, but then again, when we broke that midline, bam, we had a run. We need to break this midline level. And when we break that level of 78,000 US dollar, guys, yes, the top could even be around uh, 300,000 US dollar. But again, you know my take on this. Uh, I think we will go to 160,000 US dollar somewhere in 2025. Also, you can see that it is definitely not the end of the bull market. That is the thing that I want to show you with this chart. Because look, all the other indicators that we see over here, we are not topping out. This is topping out in the bull market. That is topping out in the bull market. This is topping out in the bull market. This is topping out in the bull market. We are now there. Look, red topping out in the bull market. These are the moments that we top out in the bull market. 
we are now there at the bottom. Only the bottom one here over there, the RSI, yes, was bullish. But look, 2017, this was all bullish. This was all bullish. We're just getting started. This bull market that probably is a copy of the 2071. We didn't see buy cycle top yet. So yes, a lot of indicators on one chart uh, that are telling us, hey, we are just getting started. We are not near even the top of a bull market. Now, let's jump into some other charts. This is the first one. On this chart, you will be able to see the liquidation heat map. Um, the liquidation heat map, as you can see, there is a lot of liquidations happening if we visit above 72,000 US dollars. That's why I said, yes, 70K, but even higher, higher, there's a lot of liquidations, 72,000 US dollar. Also a little bit lower here, 65, 64,000 US dollar. A lot of liquidations happening. All the people that are going long because of the bounce, if we drop further, they could be liquidated. All the people that went, of course, short over here, they are in profit, but when we bounce and we visit those levels, they will be liquidated. So it's important to always keep an eye on these liquidation levels. This chart is a very interesting one because this one shows you what happened with Bitcoin every time when there was a FOM C meeting or a CPI, PPI numbers coming out. Every time the same happened. Over here, that was the moment we had that FOMC meeting. Look what the Bitcoin price did. Bam, we went up. Then we had the CPI slash PPI numbers. Bam, Bitcoin went down. Then again, the FOMC, and what did the Bitcoin do? Bitcoin price went up. Then now again, today, the CPI, PPI numbers, what will happen? Probably, probably the Bitcoin price again uh, will go a little bit down. So, a uh, simplified chart, I just uh, found it on Twitter, I thought uh, it was worth sharing it, because some people find these fractals, and I think it's a very nice one. I hope it won't be playing out. But let's see what will happen today again. I have two more charts that I will do in the next part of the video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed all those charts, guys. Short term, beautiful volatility again for trading. I can see it. A lot of you are trading. A lot of you are taking profits. I already took some profits on a trade. I opened a new trade. That trade is still open. I need the Bitcoin price to go up a little bit to take that uh, profit over there as well. So short term, that volatility gives us the beautiful opportunity to trade a lot. But uh, long term, guys, the picture still remains the same. It will take another 12 months, at least, to September 2025, so 15 months almost, for Bitcoin to reach a new bull market top. It's not going to happen in 2024. Yes, a new all-time high in 2024, I can believe. The top, the ultimate bull market top, will be in 2025, guys. So we have 12 to 18 more very bullish months before we will dive into a deep bear market again with a crash. And yes, believe me, there will again be a crash in that bear market for you to pick up Bitcoin cheaper in 2026, 27. And for all those people that don't believe there will be a bear market in the long term, please stop with that. We already see Bitcoin dips with 20 to 30% in the bull market. If you don't believe that you will have a 60% crash, for example, in the bear market, you are just not right. There will be a crash every time again and again, and it will take 12 months for Bitcoin from the top to go to the bottom, and there we will be picking up Bitcoins in the long term. But if you subscribe to this channel, I will keep you up to date, guys, and tell you exactly when to buy and when to sell. Now, let's jump into the next part. The crypto tip for the day, guys, is always search for early pre-sales. These early pre-sales give you access to investing in a token before they will be listed on a centralized exchange, before the pump is mostly how you can see it. Now, these pre-sales are mostly sold on launch platforms. One of the best launch platforms out there, I have already been talking since last bull cycle about, is Paid Network Ignition. Paid Networks Ignition already did like three to four launches since that like bear market, now in the bull market, and all of them were successful. They even raised nine million US dollars for Commonwealth. I saw them raising 1.5 million dollars for Ether Games. Now again today, another launch on Ignition is going to go live. And yes, of course, first for the hodlers, if you hold 
pay token, you get early access, 24 hour earlier access than the rest. And tomorrow and the day after them will be uh, the distribution to all the other people. So if you hold like 75,000 pay tokens, you get early access to these investments and the day after as well. But then you don't need to hold those 75,000 US dollar to make it a little bit more honest. So today's token launch will be asymmetry finance. Check it, it will go live like in three to four hours, I think now when the video is online, asymmetry finance on paid ignition going live. You can be joining these pre-sales, which means you're buying these tokens at a cheap price before they get listed on the exchange, before they really increase in price. So always hunt for pre-sales is my crypto tip for the day. answering one of the questions of the followers the question was why do people always want to trade bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency into stable coins and not in euros or dollars now there is a reason for this first of all in the first couple of bull markets there were no euro or dollars listed on these exchanges we could only use stable coins by now of course bybit also has euros and dollars on their exchange so you could use bybit if you don't have bybit yet use the link down below with that link you get a bonus up to thirty thousand US dollar and you can join now this beautiful competition where you can win up to one hundred thousand US dollar so use the link click that one but if you have bybit of course now you can also exchange into euros or to dollars but stable coins are still the biggest part of cryptocurrency if you would need to exchange bitcoins into euros and dollars off exchange so back into your bank account I would never choose that above exchanging into stablecoins. But there is a big difference in between euros and dollars on a crypto exchange or outside of that crypto exchange on your bank account. If I would need to choose between selling your bitcoins on Bybit, for example, or on Blowfin into your bank account, I would never choose that above selling bitcoins into a stablecoin on that exchange. And why not? Because first of all, I don't have a bank account. But second of all, if I would have a bank account, I would still not do it. Why? Because if you sell your crypto into a bank account, for example, in the Netherlands, you will get a shitload of questions. How much Bitcoin did you buy at first? Where did you take your profits? How much profits did you have? Where does the money come from that you're now depositing on the bank account? And then when you want to buy those Bitcoins again back by sending your funds from a bank account to an exchange like Bybit, they will ask a shitload of questions again. Why do you send your money to a crypto exchange? Why do you want to buy cryptocurrency? Why do you... The banks own your money. They have full control on your money. And they are not always positive against crypto, so they won't allow you to do whatever you want. And maybe in the future, it will become even more difficult for you to buy Bitcoin with your bank account. So I don't want to have that risk. That's why I prefer to keep everything in cryptocurrency. And that's why people prefer to use stable coins, USDT, USDC, and DAI. Those three stable coins are my favorite stable coins and the most used ones. So my answer to your question is, always choose the crypto industry above the banking industry because that's exactly why we chose for crypto, to disrupt the banking system. Because they didn't let us do with our money what we want. They just don't let us do with our money what we want because it's not our money when it's on their bank account. We lend that money to them. So it's very important to see a big difference between those two. But again, if you want to exchange Bitcoins to euros or dollars on Bybit or any other exchange, of course, I would not be afraid to do that. As long as they stay in that environment and for me to be able to exchange them quickly back to Bitcoin without answering millions of questions, etc., to be able to buy those Bitcoins. The quote for today is a quote from Babe Ruth, which is of course a legend when it comes to baseball. His quote was, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Of course, when you play baseball, you can receive a strikeout, but it doesn't mean you need to be afraid to play that game. You can also win. And that's exactly with everything in life. Never let the fear rule all your decisions. You should never let fear rule your decisions. Always go for your passion. Always go for the thing that you love. Always do the thing that you want to do. Without having fear for all those things that could happen if you do what you like, if you do what you want. There's always the possibility of striking out, but it should never lead to you not playing that game. If you're playing football, yes, there's always the possibility that you will be tackled. But that doesn't mean you should stop playing football. It means you need to become better so that it's more difficult for other people to tackle you. 
So it's very important in life that you never let fear rule. Fear should never rule your life. Your decisions in life should always be ruled by love or passion. All the things that make you positive about something, that is what should rule all your decisions, not fear. So let the fear of striking out never be the reason for not playing a game. Let the fear of life never prevent you of living life to the fullest. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about our charts, up the tips, and everything else? Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day. See you tomorrow again with a new video. Bam.